Hey there, this video is going to demonstrate Nearpod. It's one of my favorite tech tools ever in the history of tech tools. So I'm just going to kind of show you and I hope this is going to work. So I'm going to first demonstrate. Um, I've kind of created one just really quickly showing some of my favorite tools in Nearpod. And I'm going to show you split screen. One side's going to be the teacher view and one side's going to be the student view. So you can kind of see what it looks like. So hopefully that will work. Let me um, split my screens. And um, so what I have here on the left is my Nearpod. What I have on the right is an incognito window that I can be the student on. So on the right side of my screen is going to be the student side, this side. This side is going to be the teacher side so that you can kind of see what both sides look like at the same time. So um, anyway, that's, that's what I'm going for here. So um, this is the one that I created. And um, so first of all, what Nearpod is, is it's a way to kind of engage students with your presentation. So if you've got a Google slide or a PowerPoint, it puts um, the teacher in charge of the lab participation. And when you flip the the slide to the next one, you control the pace with the students. So they would join with a code and whatever you're seeing on their screen is what they're seeing on their screen. So it's similar to Pear Deck, very similar actually. Um, my personal preference is I like Nearpod better and I honestly, I think it's because I learned it first and I loved it and then Pear Deck came along after. Um, so um, I'm just, you know, again, personal preference. I prefer Nearpod, but um, here it is, and, and hopefully you'll see why. So we're going to go with live participation, and what that means is that you are in a classroom, or you're live with your students, or if you're doing a Zoom and you know all the participants are live, you're just, it means at the same time, right? There is also a student-paced option, which means that you could assign um, a Nearpod to the students and kind of guiding them through a Google slide or a PowerPoint presentation, and you still have all of your interactive activities embedded in it, but the students can go at their own time and at their own pace. So that's kind of the difference there. But for my demonstration today and for like in class, I totally prefer live participation, but you also have the student paced option. So I'm going to click on live participation. Um, Okay, I'm gonna start and I'm gonna, I think I actually have started it ready. So I'm gonna, okay. So you have this code and your students will go to join.nearpod.com and enter that code. So here's where I'm gonna do a split screen. So again, this is my teacher screen. This is my student screen over here and I'm gonna go to join.nearpod.com and and it even says nearpod.com student, right? So I'm going to enter in the join code, UTA6Y, and click join. Okay, I was practicing this earlier, so ignore this for just a second. And I'm going to um, go back to the beginning. Hang on, just ignore. Okay. So this is really what it looks like when the kids first log on. I was doing a practice thing. So the kids would put in their name. They can put in an optional nickname if they want to. Um, and I, I do have them put their real name here because there is an option on the teacher side, whether you show the student name or not. So if you're looking for, you know, anonymity, you still get it. So, but just so that you know exactly who's responding with what answers, then you need their full name. So encourage the kids to use their real names here. But again, just remember that you always, as the teacher, have the option to hide those from the other students from viewing. And I'll show you that in just a minute. But anyway, um, I'm going to click join the lesson. And then it says, wait for your teacher to start. Okay, so this is the student side again right here. Over on the teachers, this is what the teachers see. So um, let me, can I move that? Let me try to do that. Okay, so um, 
this is the teacher side. So some things that are important here, this is how many slides you've got and where you are. So we're all just on slide one. Here, this is people, and I only have one student to join. So we see that Michelle has joined. So obviously, if you have a classroom of kids, you're gonna see a lot of names down through here. Green means that I am actively on this Nearpod. So what that means is that if I open a new tab here, that would mean I'm not active on the Nearpod, right? So you kind of can keep up with what kids are on and what kids are not. Um, you can remove kids from here if they, and I'll tell you how I've used this. If kids use an inappropriate name and it pops up here, I just close them out and remove them out of the class and make them rejoin with an appropriate name. So I have used that before. Um, let me just get back. So anyway, that's what that is. And here's where you can hide student names. So in a few minutes, we'll see some interactive activities that I've added in there. And if you want to share some out to the class, you can share them out anonymously. I find sometimes you get kind of a maybe a better answer if kids don't know, you know, that they're putting in some deep emotions or something to it. But there is a drawing one and kids are really proud of it and they want to share what they've done. And so they might want their name attached to it. So that's completely up to you. And you have options at all times to hide student names. So I'm going to leave it hidden for now just as we cycle through. So again, this is the teacher side. This is what we're seeing. This is what the student here, they're still waiting on the teacher, okay? So I'm gonna click that button. And here, now we're both on the same, right? And so I just entered in some of my Tech Time newsletters because it was a Google slide presentation that I had already created. So here it is, I'm talking about, oh, I don't know, Control D, I've got some Earth Day stuff, some different things going on. This is what the students are seeing, right? Okay. So I'm going to click the button to continue. Remember that Earth Day is here. So the first thing that I entered was this virtual um, field trip, kind of it's a 3D field trip that I was able to put in here. So for Earth Day, I thought we would, you know, go and uh, explore the Earth a little bit. So notice here that I'm moving the teacher side, but the student side isn't moving, right? But the student, now I'm the student over here, I can move my own 3D view of the Great Pyramids. Okay, so this is really cool. And this is um, one of Nearpod's features. They have all kinds of these little inserts that you can use. So really cool stuff. I just chose one that had to do, you know, with Earth really quickly. But just let you know that this is one of their options in there. So you could let the kids explore for a moment. And then I don't have this, but the next thing you could do was be, you know, tell something cool that you found on, you know, on the 3D um, panorama view or something like that. And then kids could respond and you could kind of compare what some kids noticed and what some didn't. So lots of things that you can do with that. So again, notice the teacher's in control. The kids, all the, all, the only options they have are, you know, to, to look around here until you're ready to go to the next. And again, here's the teacher side. I've embedded a little question. What tip, what tech tip from April would you like to um, explore more? And I did, I've already practiced. So I'm going to put a sketch up in here. The students just type in here and then I'm going to submit it. And it does take a minute for the teacher to get it, but eventually I will get some answers over here. Um, and you can choose to share out the answers and you can switch up here and we make this a little bit bigger. You can switch up here from student to teacher mode. So in teacher mode, you can see that Michelle answered SketchUp, right? And nothing has changed over here. Right now, the student can't see they, anything else that the other students have done. They're still kind of waiting for the teacher. But if I choose over here and if I had, you know, 20 students, all their names would be listed with the answer that they chose but I still have student names hidden. And if I choose share here, that shares with the student. They can see what someone entered, but they can't see who did it. So that's where your anonymous comes in. But if you want students names to be there, um, you can do that. So anyway, really cool. Just a real quick question to add in there. And then you can see all the student responses. You can also see the student responses afterwards. So um, you can come back later if you don't want to spend a lot of time now seeing what they put, but you just want them to respond. You can come back to their responses later. 
and then I'm going to click next. And again, they're switching together. Here's this month. Um, just notice here, because my next question is, what are some, you know, classroom screen tools that you can use? So now we have, and I've already, like I did, I already practiced this. So let me um, erase all this. Where's the eraser? I need a big eraser. Okay, I'm erasing. Just because I want to show you how it works. So there's the erase tool. So what I was drawing, one of the things on classroom screen is you can draw a stop, have a stoplight on your screen. So um, that's what I was drawing for the students. And then you've got this little color palette here. And students really like this. They like to draw and share their pictures. So there's what I drew. And if I'm finished, I can hit submit. And the teacher has the answer now. In teacher view, here's what Michelle submitted was this picture. And if I click on it, I can get a bigger view of it. And here I have a share button. So, and here's one to one. If I had like a bunch of my kids, there would be several here and you could cycle through and see. And if, and if someone did a really good job on one, you can hit share. And then the others, all the students can see this that they did. So it's just really cool. You have so much control as the teacher as far as what goes out to the student. And that's one of the things I love about this. And I'm going to close. And now you're back to your presentation. And you're going to hit next. Again, we're back to the slideshow. Kids can kind of look around whatever you want them to see on this slide or talk to them about their content. And then you can add, here's a little quiz question. Now, for my quiz, I only have one question. But you can have several. I think... It used to be up to 10 questions. It may be more now. Um, it's been a little bit since I used it in a classroom, but you could have up to 10 questions, but that might be more now. I only have one, but if you had more, the kids would just answer all their questions. So what mouse click will select an entire line that is a triple click, and then you're going to submit. And then over here, the teacher gets to see um, your answers. It shows you, here's Michelle. She answered correctly. It's in green. I think of incorrect would be, you know, a, a, a red dot. And then if they haven't answered yet, it's a gray dot. But you can see if they answered A or B, which is also really good information. It gives you this little graph right here. And if you click share, all it shares here is the graph of correct, incorrect, or not answered. So the students can kind of see if they got it correct or if they got it wrong, how many other people, you know, percentage-wise got it wrong. So that's just kind of a neat little thing to do. And then if you unshare, it comes back to the quiz. Um, and there you, go. there you go. So just a little quick question. And sometimes just one question is a great one to make sure they're staying focused and paying attention and gives you some really good information. And then next, I think if I know what's coming up, this is one of my favorite, yes, this is one of my favorite tools in Nearpod. It reminds me of a Padlet, if you have ever used a Padlet. Um, and you can choose the background, you know, just like in Padlet, there's corkboard and all kinds of stuff. And um, I'll show you some more of those in a minute. But the here's the student view. And... They can put, you know, anything that they want here. And they can add pictures and GIFs and little audio files. And then if they enter it, it adds just like a little, you know, thing like Padlet. They can delete it if they want to. Here's the teacher view. Now, this one does automatically populate for all of the students. Okay, so you, you know your audience better than anyone, but... Nearpod has these awesome options over here for teachers. So if you click the settings button, this settings is just for this slide, okay, or this type of slide. So first of all, students can see the names. That is off. See how this ha is up there? My name is not showing. If I turn that on, now my name, and they know who's made the responses. So that is a choice. Students can edit their responses. Um, that is an option. This is the one that is so important, right? that you have to approve student posts, 
Okay, so if you feel like there is any chance that a student's going to put something inappropriate or an inappropriate picture, then you need to turn that on. And then when a student submits, you have this approve button. And before it becomes visible to all the other students on like the Padlet style background, you approve it. And then once approved, then they start populating based on you. OK, so I really highly recommend you turning on this approved student post button if you're going to use this one. But this is an awesome tool to get some feedback on students. If you want, you know, you can always turn off student names and then, you know, approve the posts and then you can choose which ones you approve and which ones you don't. So but I love this feature in Nearpod. What a great way to get student inter interacting with your lesson. OK. And then you just keep cycling through. That's actually all of the, the interactive things that I have added on this one. Um, but that's how you do it. And just notice the teacher control that you have with this. I'm going to go ahead and just maximize. And I'm going to um, close. Um, yes, I want to leave this session. OK. And then I'm going to, it'll take us back to Nearpod and I'll just show you kind of how I did it. So here it is. Um, the more that you have, you know, this will fill up with all of your Nearpods. So the way that I did that, you can go to create, there's a couple places you can go. You can go to create, um, you know, an activity or a video. You can build and edit. This is where I started. Um, you can edit pre-made materials. Okay. So here is where this is kind of like your dashboard when you're creating a Nearpod. And the first thing you want to do, if you already have a Google slide created that you've used before or a PowerPoint or something. So if you already have kind of like your, your uh, backbone of the presentation, your content already created, you would just go to upload files and you choose if, you know, if you want to upload it from, your computer or if you've got something in Google Drive. I'll see if I've got one in Google Drive. This is what I used before because I had my my tech time that I was using. The first time you do this, you do have to allow it permission to your Google Drive. So let me just see if I've got another. That's the one that I chose earlier. Um, let me see if I can find one. I thought I had a lot of Google slides in there. I'm not seeing a bunch. Actually, I'm not sure what this is, but I'll pull it up. Marketing scavenger hunt. And then here you can, you want to load it as individual slides, I would say. If you load it as um, a PDF, it's going to be kind of one single unit. And I just think you'd rather have individual slides. I'll talk a little bit more about that in just a minute. So this takes a minute for it to load up. There is also, while this is loading, um, a Nearpod Chrome extension. And then if you have your Google slide already open, it's called Nearpod Eyes. You can just um, insert the Nearpod activities directly into your Google slide like that. And that's really helpful. Um, it should be. It's processing. I was going to say, where are my slides? It's still processing. Um, while it's coming up, I'll just start showing you some activities, but you should see my slides start to populate here. So you're going to click add content and activities. This is where kind of the really cool, fun stuff is. So you're going to click on that. And then here are some options that you have. Notice there are two tabs, content or activities. These are all your content tabs, but if you scroll down, these are your activities. So you can either scroll or click back and forth. It does. I tend to be a scroller. So you might see this plus slides. So you can add a blank slide with it or a new slide in it. Now, keep in mind, whatever you add is going to be in addition to the Google slide or PowerPoint that you've just uploaded. And then there's also this slideshow and it's a little, I think it's a little confusing the way it's listed. All right. So here is, 
here are all the um, the slides that are in this marketing scavenger hunt. Okay, which is probably a really bad example, but it'll be fine. If I chose to add a slideshow into this, it's going to take me to where I can do the same thing that I just did. But what it's going to do, it's not going to add, it's going to add it as one single slide right here. Here, I'll do one just just to give you an example. Um, and then when you share it with the students, they can scroll at their own pace through that one single item. OK, and which might be OK if that's what you're doing, but it's almost like inserting a Google slide into a Google slide, if that makes any sense. Um, now I'm going to have to find another one. Maybe this won't take long. I'll choose that one. That's a pretty big file. I might should have chosen a smaller one. Okay. And another thing, it puts them at the very bottom. Okay. So no matter if I was here when I clicked it, it, it adds at the bottom, but it's super easy to just drag wherever you want to. Okay. So here's what I want you to just recognize when I uploaded a beginning lesson. Do you see how it gave them each individual slides in this Nearpod dashboard? But when I inserted a slideshow as content, it made it one unit. Okay, so the kids are going to be able to cycle through this one unit on their own because it's the same as putting in a single question or one of those Padlet views. Okay, so I, that's just a little confusing. Um, that's not my favorite feature in Nearpod, but I do think when you see slideshow, you might think that that's where I put my main event. That's not where you put your main event. OK, that's where you would put an additional slideshow. So if you're doing um, your main event is about, I don't know, World War Two. And so that's what your major slides are about. But then you find a great one about just Churchill and his involvement in World War II. And you want to put that in there as kind of an extra resource. You can insert your Churchill slideshow into your World War II Nearpod. OK, so maybe that helps make sense. But I, that's a, just a little confusing the way it's worded to me. And I just wanted to share that with you. So some other options on here, um, this VR field trip, that's where I found the one for the pyramids, which is so cool. Um, I'll just click on it and you can see some really good examples. Here's a bunch. You can search for anything, Mars or um, there's Venice, there's Berlin Wall. So just so many things that you can choose from in here. Um, if you've got something in particular that you're looking for, you can add audio files. You can add um, here's some videos, all kinds of stuff, um, more videos here. Um, my favorite things are the activities, so I'm just going to get to them. So time to climb is very similar to like a Kahoot. So what it would do is just add a little question game and the kids kind of do a race and they climb to see who can answer the questions quickly. What is really neat is it works with this quiz option. So the, the question that I put in earlier that was called a quiz and I only had the one, but you could do several questions if you want to. When you create the quiz, Nearpod pops up a little answer. It says, hey, would you like to convert this to a time to climb fun activity? So instead of just kind of a straight line quiz, it puts it into like a Kahoot ish setting. OK, so it just depends on what you want. If you want the quiz, this is kind of a little slower pace. The kids don't feel that pressure of, you know, having to answer quickly which is sometimes fun, depends on what you're looking for. So these two kind of work together, um, and I really love that. So I'm just going to click on quiz just to show you kind of some options in there. So this is if you want to add either a single question to judge for, you know, understanding, or you can add several questions if you want to. So you just type your questions there. These are multiple choice. 
You can add answers. If you want more answer options, you can insert media. Here you've got lots of formatting options. Um, I'm just going to put one so that you can uh, see what I'm doing. Um, you just quickly select the correct answer here, you know, um, and then the kids are ready to go. And then you just um, add the question. There's one ready. And then when you're done, you click save. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. I'll delete this one. And I'll just add the one and then you click save. And of course it puts it at the bottom. So you're just gonna drag it wherever you want it to appear. So if you want this quiz to show, you know, there, you can do that wherever you want it to. So what I have done before is I, I if I know all the interactive things I want to add, I might add all of them and then I just come and place them where I want them to be in the slideshow. So some more that you can do. And again, I love the activities An open ended question. This is what it sounds like. So if you don't want it to be multiple choice, you actually want kind of a free response from the students. You can add your question there. Um, you got all these options. You can insert media, audio, sorry, audio or other media. And you can also enable students to do audio recordings, which might be kind of cool. So you might put something up here and then they respond back with their voice, a little recorded with one, which is really kind of cute. Um, so I'm going to that's an option for you to do there. Matching pairs is kind of fun. It's a little game and it's just like what it sounds like. It's a little matching game. You have, you might have um, a noun and then another word and the kids have to match the noun with the word. Or if you're doing something in another language, you could do, you know, the English word and the Spanish word. Or if you're doing math, you can have a math problem and the correct answer. So all kinds of matching pair kind of things that you can do there. Or like this one, an apple starts with A, so you get to set that up. Um, it integrates beautifully with Flipgrid, which is so cool. So if you click a Flipgrid right here in the middle of the Nearpod, you can, you know, attach it to a topic that you've already got created in Flipgrid. And it just, um, it's kind of this beautiful thing when they work together. Draw it, which is really cool. Kids love this one. This is the one where I drew the stoplight earlier. And you can give them some instructions. You can drag files. Um, there's lots of, uh, there's a draw it library. So here's plant production and ecosystem. So if there's one that you want to pick that's already created, you can do that. You can add instructions. This is actually the background image. So let's say that you put in a picture of, I don't know, a skeleton, right? The skeleton of a body and you wanted kids to then either, you know, draw where a bone is or something like that. Whatever you wanted to do, you can put kind of the background image and then the kids kind of fill in around it. So um, just some really cool things that you can do with the draw it tool there. Um, let's see what else is in here. Um, the collaborate board, that's the one that I used Then I love it. It is similar to like a Padlet in there. So that's what that one is. You can do a poll of all the kids that are in there at the time, which is really great. And then just like the others, you get to see the results and then when all the kids are in, you can share those results with all the kids so they can immediately see what everybody put on there. So cool. A fill in the blank and then a little memory test. And I just got an email today that they have created a new drag and drop um, activity. And I don't even see it on here yet, but it's brand new. So I can't wait to see that in action. They're always adding new stuff. And it's just really kind of, I think, professional looking and interactive. And just if you can get so creative with these. So those are some of my favorite things in here that you can do. And then when you're ready to go, you just save it at the bottom. And 
Okay, so here it is. It's still saving. This is the one I did earlier. Um, when you are here and you're ready to share it out, you can do live participation, which is the one that I demonstrated earlier. That's, again, real time. Either the kids are right there with you or you've set a time, okay, at, you know, 2 o'clock, we're going to do the Nearpod, everybody put in the join code, or you have student paste option, which is you send it home with the kids and say, you know, at your own time, at your own pace, you complete this Nearpod. So that's how you create one and how you share it out. Um, I do want to show you, this is, you know, don't reinvent the wheel kind of thing. They have a ton that are already created. So you can explore resources here. And so if you want to select, here's um, by standard, you can select standards or by state. There is Kentucky right there. Um, if you've got specific ones that you're looking for, if you want to go by subject area or by grade and see what is out there. If um, I know that Earth Day is coming up, you can search for Earth Day. And these are already created for you. So if you see one you love, um, let's see, Earth and the Solar System. This is for grades 9 through 12. You can click on it. Actually, I just think that might be a YouTube video now that I'm clicking on it. I may, let me back out of that. Yeah, it's a video. I chose a bad one. Okay, so this one is going to be a Nearpod right and you can preview the lesson here this is for grades three through five and you can preview it to see if it's one that you might want let it load we'll go to preview you can cycle through understand the general narratives and practices let's get started so here it's a question right away and a poll and let's dive in. There's some, you know, different activities. If you like this, then you can click add to my lessons and then you can use it. Okay. So th that's easy as that. It has some related content. So if you're like, uh, you know what, I'm not really crazy about that one. You can, you know, switch to this one and check it out. So just a lot of great resources in here already. So you might can just pick one out of here and just run with it and it's ready to go. So here, if you like it, you just click preview um, and keep going through. And again, if you like it, you just click add to my lessons. And to get back to your dashboard, you just click um, the Nearpod icon. So some teacher resources here, just if you need help. You know, on your own, you can either contact me. I would love to help you or come out and work with you. Or there's some videos to help you get started. So just some great things, um, you know, to, to help you out there. Um, like I said, I, I hope you try it. They're super fun, super engaging with students. It's a little bit different than Pear Deck. Um, but you might find that you like it. A lot of good options in there for engaging your students in some really good stuff and you can be really creative with it and really get some great formative assessment, you know, and feedback back from the students, which is always a good thing. So I hope you enjoy Nearpod and if there's anything that I can help you with or if anything confused you that I said, I'll be happy to come out and sit with you and we'll do one together until you feel comfortable with it. So if you need anything, just let me know and happy Nearpodding.